This photograph, taken on board a Boeing 747, gives us a rare glimpse of the cabin of an airliner during a disaster, having been taken after a structural failure caused the rapid decompression of the cabin. Everyone in this photo, including the person taking the picture, perished in the resulting crash. <laughs> The 1985 crash of Japan Airlines Flight 123 is the deadliest single aircraft accident in global aviation history. But to understand how it happened, we have to go back seven years before the disaster. In 1978, the plane in question, a Boeing 747-146SR, was making a domestic flight from Tokyo's Haneda Airport to Itomi Airport. Upon landing, however, the plane bounced and pitched too far upwards, causing a severe Severe tail strike. None of the 394 on board were killed in this incident, but 25 were injured, too seriously so, and the plane's aft pressure bulkhead was cracked open. The fuselage of an airliner is essentially a pressure vessel, and it's pressurized to maintain a hospitable atmosphere for passengers, even when the plane is at very high altitudes, where the low pressure would normally make it difficult to breathe. The aft pressure bulkhead is the rear component of this pressure seal, and the damage done to it in this incident was so extensive that Japan Airlines did not have the expertise to fix it and so contracted a Boeing repair team in Tokyo. During a month-long reconstruction process, the Boeing team had to replace a large part of the aft pressure bulkhead. They fabricated a new portion of the bulkhead to be riveted onto the remaining part of the original. Normally, each section of the bulkhead is secured to adjacent sections by two rows of rivets, and the team adhered to this as they installed the new portion. However, they were left with an overlap between two sections that only had enough space to fit one row of rivets instead of two. The procedure for solving such a problem involves introducing a splice plate between the two sections of bulkhead. The one row of rivets that can fit in the overlap will go through the splice plate and an additional two rows will further secure the splice plate to each bulkhead section separately. But the Boeing team made a grave error while performing this repair. Somehow, instead of one splice plate connecting the two bulkhead sections, they ended up with two separate splice plates, where one was meaninglessly bolted onto a single section of bulkhead, but not the other. The result? There was only one row of rivets connecting the bulkhead sections. The introduction of the splice plate was pointless. Even worse, this strange configuration led engineers to mistakenly place a seal between the two splice plates, concealing the error. Now unable to see the problem, a Boeing inspector approved the repair. The plane would soon be in the air again, and with every cabin pressurization, the aft pressure bulkhead is subjected to a large amount of force. This puts strain on the overlap where there is only one row of rivets holding the sections together. Over time, this section will eventually fatigue. By 1985, the pressurization cycle has been repeated for over 12,000 flights since the repair. That section of bulkhead should now be cracked, although the cracks appear so small, they are never detected in any inspections. On August 12, 1985, Japan Airlines Flight 123 is scheduled to take the aircraft from Haneda Airport to Atomi Airport once again. It takes off at 6.12 p.m. 12 minutes later, the aft pressure bulkhead fails mid-air. The pressure seal has been broken and the cabin is subjected to rapid decompression. The plane is rocked and any unsecured items are blown to the rear of the craft. Water vapor in the air condenses, creating a fog in the cabin. The pilots feel an explosion. and immediately broadcast a distress signal and ask to turn around for an emergency landing back at Haneda Airport. Tokyo Control approved a right-hand turn to come back, and this was initiated by First Officer Yutaka Sasaki, today sitting in the captain's seat under training from veteran captain Masama Takahama. Takahama is alarmed by the steep banking Sasaki seems to be performing for this turn and tells him to ease up. 
Sasaki attempts to correct, but nothing happens. As the confused pilots attempt to figure out why the controls aren't responding, flight engineer Hiroshi Fukuda alerts them that the hydraulic pressure is dropping. Unbeknownst to the pilots, the explosion they felt was the pressurized cabin air escaping through the cracked bulkhead. This occurred with such force that it tore off a massive section of the aircraft's tail, including the vertical stabilizer and rudder. As the tail came apart, all four hydraulic systems were severed and were now leaking the last of their fluid, leaving the plane uncontrollable. The plane abandons Sasaki's turning attempt halfway through, sending them on a northward course. The pilots struggle to understand what is happening and with the cabin depressurized, start to feel the effects of hypoxia or oxygen starvation adding to their confusion. Tokyo Control goes without response and flight engineer Fukuda must repeat himself as the pilots repeatedly ask about the hydraulic pressure, seemingly unable to understand their situation. This photo taken by a passenger shows oxygen masks in use after the cabin lost pressure. However, the pilots fail to don them. Fukuda does suggest they put on their oxygen masks and Captain Takahama agrees although they never actually follow through. Their minds are preoccupied with trying to comprehend the emergent disaster they are in, and the hypoxia is making coherent thought more strained. With no control, the plane enters a fugoid cycle. As it pitches downwards and descends, its airspeed increases, which results in lift, and the plane pitches back up. However, this will cause a decrease in airspeed and the cycle repeats in a roller coaster motion. For flight 123, these cycles last 90 seconds each. Simultaneously, the aircraft experiences Dutch roll. With no vertical stabilizer, the craft yaws right while banking left, before yawing left and banking right. These motions became very profound. At some points, the plane was banked 50 degrees, with witnesses on the ground spotting the plane as it appeared to be drunkenly staggering through the air like a ship rocking on rough seas. One even managed to capture a photo in which we can see the plane missing its tail fin. These continuing motions were very distressing for the 524 people on board, as evidenced by the notes some wrote during the flight. To think that our dinner last night was the last time. There's little oxygen. I feel sick. Inside the plane, voices are saying, let's do our best. Please look after the children. The plane is turning around and descending rapidly. I am grateful for the truly happy life I have enjoyed until now. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Help me. I don't want to die. For over half an hour, the pilots attempted to regain control over Flight 123 as it headed north towards Mount Fuji. They brought down the landing gear in an attempt to counteract the fugoid motion, and it did, but it worsened the Dutch roll. They tried to turn the plane using asymmetric thrust, accelerating the engines on one side while decelerating them on the other. Despite their best efforts, the engine controls are not responsive enough to effectively respond to and counter the forces already battling the aircraft. At 6.56pm, the right wing tip and fourth engine collided with some trees on a mountain ridge line and were sheared off. The plane continued on, the right wing striking another ridge line and disintegrating, sending the plane onto its back on another ridge where it exploded. Twenty minutes later, a United States Air Force C-130 from nearby Yokota Air Force Base finds the wreckage. The crew passes on the coordinates to the Japanese authorities, but looking down at the fire pouring from the decimated plane, they add that the chance of survivors is slim. It is 4.39 a.m. when a Japanese helicopter finally finds the wreckage, the fire on the mountainside glowing through the night. There is nowhere to put the helicopter down, but at a nearby village, rescue workers have been preparing for an expedition at first light. They will find a horrific sight awaits them. The remains of the 747 are scattered all across the mountainside, likewise the bodies of its passengers but unbelievably, they find four survivors. In their hospital beds, they will recount the harrowing experience of the plane crash, but worse still, their memories of lying in the wreckage all throughout the night, taunted by the sound of the 4am helicopter that passed overhead but did not stay, and haunted 
by the screams and moanings of other passengers that slowly faded through the night. The survivors' stories revealed a horrifying detail. There had perhaps been more survivors who eventually succumbed to their injuries due to the delayed response. Doctors later confirmed this story, noting several victims appeared to have injuries that would have been survivable with earlier help. The long wait time was attributed to the seemingly slim chance for survival. Given the difficult terrain, the decision was made that it would make more sense to wait until they were fully prepared before attending the crash site. With 520 killed, Japan Airlines Flight 123 remains the deadliest single aircraft accident in history. Investigations revealed the faulty bulkhead repair to be the cause of the disaster, and Boeing has since made changes to the way it installs and inspects the aft pressure bulkhead. In further analysis and tests, it was also concluded that once the bulkhead had failed, the pilots had no chance to recover the plane, and in fact had actually kept it airborne longer than the pilots running the simulations. Despite the massive disparity in conditions between simulating an event and having it actually occur spontaneously in a life or death situation. The disaster caused a large loss of public trust in Japan Airlines, despite the faulty repair being carried out by Boeing, and bookings with the airline fell by a third. The president of Japan Airlines resigned, and a maintenance manager with the company committed suicide in way of apology for the incident. One of the inspectors that had cleared the plane as airworthy also committed suicide. What's surprising about this tragedy is the level to which we can put ourselves there. There is a picture from the cabin. We can read the thoughts of victims in written notes and even hear them firsthand from miraculous survivors. Of course, this all requires the use of our imagination, which can never come close to the actual experience. The experience of tumbling out of control through the air. The experience of slamming into the mountainside the experience of waiting to die in the wreckage, the experience of 520 people who spent their last moments on board Flight 123. Thank you.